Mr. President, I have the distinct pleasure to announce to this assembly the milestone the Nile River Basin has achieved this year. The Cooperative Framework Agreement of the Nile River Basin, CFA, is poised to enter into force with the required number of ratifications. The entry into force of this first ever Nile Basin-wide treaty, the Cooperative Framework Agreement, will pave the way for sustained cooperation and shared growth across the entire river basin. Ethiopia, along with its co-riparian sisterly countries, will work towards the realization of the principles of the CFA and the full potential of the Nile River. Furthermore, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is generating electricity, responding to the energy demands of Ethiopia and the Eastern Africa region. It is our sincere hope that the remaining riparian countries will join the CFA and play a constructive role in ensuring equitable and reasonable utilization of the Nile River. I'm also proud to announce to this August Assembly that the Ethiopian Green Legacy, the notable initiative of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, saw the planting of 40 billion seedlings within five years, increasing our forest coverage from 3 to, 20 per, per, to 24 percent. This stands as a substantial goal, contribution to the uh, absorption of greenhouse gas and a tangible measure against the adverse impact of climate change. Based on its long-term low emission development strategy, Ethiopia is also on the path to sustainable energy transformation by developing and transitioning to non-fossil fuel energy sources. Such efforts must be supported by the full activation of the global commitment, especially through the provision of adequate climate financing. Mr. President, maritime insecurity in the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean is a source of great concern for Ethiopia. With over 120 million population and significant maritime trade, Ethiopia entirely depends on the safe, secure maritime activity in the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. This region is threatened by conflicts, piracy, and other illicit activities. Over the years, Ethiopia has played an instrumental role in combating the cause of insecurity. We also continue our efforts to work with other neighbors to contribute on durable basis to ensure peaceful navigation on the high seas. We see a great need to chart a new path for inclusive maritime security engagement with equal participation of countries with stakes on both sides of the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. Furthermore, terrorism continues to be a grave threat to the peace and security of the Horn of Africa. The growing rise of violent extremism like Al-Shabaab and its international and internal affiliates have continued their vicious attack against civilians and security of the region. The region has reached a milestone in degrading terrorism owing to the resilience of the people of Somalia and the sacrifice of the sons and daughters of Burundi, Djibouti, Kenya, Uganda, and my country, Ethiopia. The authorization of the Security Council and the international finance for the African Union peace support operation have indeed played an instrumental role. I'm confident the government of Somalia will soon reckon with and recognize the sacrifice we made to Somalia's liberation from the grip of terrorist groups. Ethiopia's memorandum of understanding with Somaliland is based on existing political dispensation in Somalia. Our objective is shared growth and prosperity in the region. Similar agreements have been concluded by other states and there is no reason for the government of Somalia to incite hostility that obviously intends to cover internal political tensions. I therefore reject the unfounded allegation levied against my country. 
Ethiopia's name can never be associated with any one of the allegations. I rather call on the federal government of Somalia to join hands to eliminate terrorist groups that are causing chaos and mayhem on the people of the region. The recent maneuvers of actors from outside the Horn of Africa region under these efforts, undermine these efforts. Nevertheless, Ethiopia will not be deterred from its resolute commitment to combating terrorism. We therefore call upon these actors to immediately stop their reckless actions. We also call on the international community to recognize the imminent risk originating from this irresponsible act and to take concrete measures to prevent the loss of hard-won gains in combating terrorism in the Horn of Africa. Mr. President, in conclusion, I would like to reiterate Ethiopia's commitment to the maintenance of global peace and security and upholding multilateralism. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia. Mr. President, while international crisis demand our attention, we must not overlook regional threats that directly challenge national sovereignty and stability. Somalia currently faces a serious threat from Ethiopia's recent actions, which flagrantly violate our territorial integrity. Ethiopia's attempts to annex parts of Somalia under the goose of secure and sea access are both unlawful and unnecessary. Somalia, Somali ports have always been accessible for Ethiopia's legitimate commercial activities, reflecting our commitment to regional trade and cooperation. However, Ethiopia's aggressive maneuvers, including its controversial agreement with one of our regional administration, undermines, undermines Somali sovereignty and emboldens secessionist movements threatening our national unity. These actions not only sow division at the time when Somalia is thri striving for peace and cohesion, but also serve as propaganda for terrorist groups like Al-Shabaab, who exploit Ethiopians' provocations to recruit and radicalize vulnerable individuals. Such destabilized behavior poses a significant risk to the security and stability of the entire Horn of Africa. Somalia asserts it is sovereign rights to defend its territorial integrity and calls on Ethiopia to cease its provocations and adhere to the international law. We urge the international community to stand with Somalia in condemning these violations and upholding the principles of international sovereignty and territorial integrity, which are the cornerstones of international peace and security. Regional stability depends on mutual and mutual respect for these principles, and Ethiopia must be held must be held accountable for actions that threaten to destabilize the Horn of Africa. Mr. President, 